If you got your Bibles tonight, you know, uh, I was studying today in 1 John. It seemed like I've been there for some time now. I, I've just kind of got hung up in that area of the Bible. And uh, in 1 John, in, in chapter number one, chapter number two, chapter number two, and I, I want to, I probably won't get through with this, it'll probably be a two-part thing uh, tonight, we'll do, probably, maybe probably finish it up next week, but I want to ask you a question, it, uh, it would be a questionable uh, a message tonight, but asking the question, it's would you be embarrassed? Now I'm going to answer the question. I'm going to answer it from the Word of God. As I was reading today and reading from First John. And as I, I started here in the, I, I heard a, a quite, uh, heard this, uh, not this, nothing similar even to this. But the other day on the radio, there was a question asked on the radio or something about. Uh, uh, a lady called in and asked, well, is it anywhere in 3 John? And I thought about that. Now, thinking about how many times does a, a, in a church is a question asked about something of being in 3 John. And I, I thought, you know, that's, that's just amazing. If a person stood up or a preacher stood up and he said, I'm going to preach this morning out of 3 John chapter 1. People would look at him like a calf at a new gate. And say, he's stupid. He's, he's trying to be funny. They are three Johns. Actually, they're four. Amen. There's Saint John, and there's first, second, and third John. So I want to be in Second John, but I want to be in First John. But it's not Saint John, but it's First John. But in First John chapter two. And in verse number 21, I want to read this to you, and we're going to read the remaining part of that chapter tonight. And the thing about it is, it says, And I have not written unto you, because ye know not the truth, but because ye know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar? But he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ. He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Now, I want you to think about this as I read this. Anybody that will deny God is an Antichrist. They are anti-God. All right? But it says in verse number 23, Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father, 
But he that acknowledgeth the Son hath the Father also. Let that therefore abide in you which ye have heard from the beginning. If that which ye have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. Now it says if, if that abide. If, that is conditional. Now if that which ye have heard abide in you. Now, it says, now, it says, you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you. Ye also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. Uh, so let me ask you now, I'm not going to come back to these verses, but I want to ask you, how close are you walking to God tonight? How close are you? Is, is what you have heard and what you have learned? Because now folks, I believe God's getting ready to wind this thing up. And we're looking, Isaiah was looking through a telescope about six, seven hundred years down the road. And he was looking toward the cross. We're looking back at the cross over 2,000 years. It's already behind us. Now you look what God has got prepared for us. Look what God has got laid up for the, them that love him and look for His appearing. Now are you? Are you? Look at the empty pews tonight. Oh, it's raining outside. People in hell tonight going to wood to God it was raining. But the Bible says, let that which, let that therefore abide in you. Let that, if you've got salvation, God said let, it, let, let somebody know about it. All right? But he said now, look in verse 25. And this is the promise that he hath promised us. God, God made the promise. And God don't crawfish out. And God, don't, God keeps his promises. You might back out and I might back out. But God don't back out. But he says even eternal life. Eternal life now God has given you and given me. And that's real. That's real. And brother you can count on that. You can take that to the bank. Alright. He said these things have I written unto you concerning them. Them that seduce you. Or them that try to tear you down or pull you apart. The world today is trying to pull you in every way they can. Look, look, at, look at the world itself. Every, every, every march that's out there is denying God. Everybody you talk to, they want to talk about everything but God. All right? Now stay with me and keep that thought tonight. I'm talking about, would you be embarrassed? And we're coming to it shortly. But the anointing which ye have received, the anointing, if you're saved now, I'm talking to saved people tonight. But the anointing which ye have received of Him, Him, God Almighty, the Holy Ghost of God, abideth in you. He, the Holy Spirit, abideth in you and you need not that any man teach you you don't need the, the world to teach you you don't need me to teach you you've got the Bible you've got the Holy Spirit of God alright but he said and you need not that any man teach you but as the same anointing teacheth you of all things 
and is truth. What does the Bible say all the way through it? Let God be true and let every man be a liar. God is the truth. All right. And he said, and is no lie. God is truth. He said he is truth and is no lie. And even as it hath taught you, ye shall, ye shall abide in him. You shall stay in him. That's what God demands. No less. Now I want to teach tonight, if I can, I'll preach to you for a few minutes on verse 28. And now, little children, abide in him that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and what? Will you be embarrassed? That's what I want to ask you. Are you going to be ashamed? Are you going to be red faced? You're going, you're going to look back and you're going to say, Oh dear God, what did I not confess today? Oh, I did not go to the priest. Boy, Father Dean didn't do nothing. But sin is self. It ain't Father Dean, it's Father God. Listen to what he says. Now little children abide in him, and when he shall appear, we may have, listen, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And if ye know that he is righteous, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of him. Heavenly Father, honor thy word and thy servant. Set a guard upon our lips in Christ's name. Amen. All right, let's look at this. As a blood bought. As a born-again believer, saved by the amazing grace of God. Now, I want you to think this thing through. Would you be embarrassed if suddenly the Lord appeared and the Lord returned? Right now. Right now. God walked in. Said, Joy and stand up here. Right now. Fred Brown, stand up here. It's your time. Okay. Would you be embarrassed if suddenly the Lord returned and he stood in his divine and all of the holiness of God. And you had to stand there in his, all his glowing, glorious presence. The holiness of God stood right there. And you had to stand there right before him. And you think about this. Would there be fear? Would there be fear in facing him? Would they, would they now? Think about this. You think about verse 28. Look at look at look what it says. And not be ashamed. And and what I'm talking about, facing the things left undone. As well as facing the things we shouldn't have done. That you should have done or you shouldn't have done. You shouldn't have talked about or you should have talked about. God said everything 
everything done, you're going to give an account for. God said, what did he say? And not be ashamed before him at his coming. Now, we're going to look at this. Now is the time to make. And I want you to think about this. As I read this this evening, I want you to think about, you're talking about your truck. What about proper adjustments? Right now, I'm making proper adjustments in your life. What about America making proper adjustments? Oh, I'm going to put this in, and I want to put that in. Have you prayed about it? Well, Daddy was this, and Mama was that, and Daddy was this, and Mama was that, and this, and that, and that. Buddy, I don't care what daddy was or mama was. What about the one you're voting for or you're putting in? Or what about the one of killing babies and nothing? But I, I listen, you better, you better do what God wants you to do. You better get some things adjusted in your life. Well, I just don't like so and so. I ain't going to church with so-and-so. I ain't talking to so-and-so. I'm not witnessing to so-and-so. Well, just go to hell with them. God said, if you can't love your brother whom you have seen, how can you love God whom you have not seen? God said, will you stand before me? and not be ashamed. How will you be embarrassed? I'd love to have about a 500 seat auditorium plumb full tonight. As I begin to look at this, I thought about the church where I used to pastor and it being plumb full. Over 500 seated. And you think about this. How many of them were lost? And how many dying going to hell without God? But just come to see or to be seen? Or to see what was going on? But the thing about it is, what about salvation? Let's get into it tonight. Let's look about salvation. Ephesians 1.13. You were called to the front to stand before him. Would you be embarrassed about your salvation? In Ephesians, in chapter 1 and verse number 13. And the Bible says, In whom you also trusted. Did you? Did you? Are you? The thing about it is, faith in Christ as your personal redeemer. Do you trust him? Still yet. But the thing about it is, he said, in whom ye also trusted. After, after, not before, but after that ye heard the word of truth. You have to hear the word of God. You can't be paid to go to church you can't be bought off. You can't be pressured. And the preacher don't save you. And the thing about it is, the gospel of your salvation, it's not the preacher's salvation. He can't give you salvation. The church can't give you salvation. Your buddy can't give you salvation. Your mother or your family cannot give you salvation. But he says, the gospel, the gospel, the gospel, that's the pill you need to take. And he said here, he said, in whom also after that you believed after, after. 
Brother, that's the morning after pill. Right there. He said, after you believed, he said, in whom also after that you believed, then you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Glory to God. Hallelujah. You were sealed. Brother, God put the seal of promise on you, brother, and all the demons of hell and all the demons of this world cannot break that seal. That seal, the thing about it is forgiven for our cruel and perverted, our rebellion against God and everything that it has ever been. God forgives it all. And God wipes everything clean. And the thing about it is the fear of facing crimes that you committed and all the sins that you have committed, God wipes them all away through the blood of the Lamb of God. Salvation is real. Salvation is not something you put on and take off. You're either saved or you're not. The thing about it is you're, some, you're facing God about your salvation. Or would you be embarrassed? Would you be embarrassed to face God with the salvation you've got right now? Think about it. What would be your answer right now? Buddy, I'm not ashamed to face Him with my salvation. Hallelujah to God. I'd walk up there and I'd say, Glory to God, I'm blood bought with your blood. You bought me with your blood, Lord Jesus. And if I, God would let me walk up there, I'd hit the carpet at His feet or the stones or the rocks or the dirt and I'd kiss His feet, glory to God, because He did buy me. He bought me, I'm blood bought tonight. It's my, my salvation, it's His salvation that He bought me through the blood and gave me the salvation of His righteousness. His righteousness is in me, the Holy Ghost of God. I have no righteousness except what was imputed to me. I would face Him and not be one bit ashamed to say, I'm saved tonight through the blood that you shed on Calvary. Number two, what about your service? I believe I'd just be a, just a little slow going right there. I thought about that as I began reading 28 again. We may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. And I looked at that and I said, what about your service? What about his, our service? How much service have you done for him? How willing. What a lot of empty pews, ain't they? And the thing about it is, look in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 7. And see what it says. Chapter 6 and verse number 7. And it says right here. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men. 
But let's, let's back up. You know, as we look at this, let's, let's go to verse 5 and let's read down just a little bit. Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh with fear and trembling in singleness of your heart as unto Christ. Not with eye service as men pleasers, men is plural, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. But now look at verse seven, now look at verse seven. With good will doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth the same shall he receive of the Lord, whether he be bond or free. But you know what we'll do? We'll do good things as long as we can get a pat on the back by man or we'll get recognized in the church. Amen, James? As long as we'll get noticed, as long as somebody will call us to the front and say, boy, look what he done, or look what she done, what are you going to do when he calls you to the front? Will you be embarrassed? What about it? What about your talents used for God's glory? Oh, the first thing it hit me this evening. Gene, you'll never believe it. I sat in there and I, I just about cried. I did. Gene was upstairs uh, vacuuming. And uh, she said, Boy, that vacuum cleaner, vacuuming under the bed, and I cleaned all that out, and I knew what was under that bed. I knew what was under it. And I sat there, and boy, I mean, I started shaking. I bought that thing and have a pawn shop in 1980, 79, really. It's made, it's a Gibson J45. It's a D, it's a D45. It's a Sunburst Gibson. It's made in 1956. And I told God, I said, God, if you let me get that guitar. I'll play it till you come if you'll just let me learn how to play it. See, I've lied. I started taking lessons. 
David Johnson. Talents used for God's glory. Time properly distributed. True to the total work of the church. What about it? Stephanie, I thought about you. How many of us took them books in here? How many of them do the work that she's doing? How many of us keep up with every dime, every penny? Pay the bills. Could I do it? No, sir. Would I try to do it? Only, oh dear God, what a mess I'd make. What a mess. Because I don't have the talent. I don't have the sense to do it. Would I be ashamed to stand before him and tell him I couldn't do it? Yes, I would. I'd be ashamed. But the thing about it is, I'd be ashamed because I'd say I never tried. Brother Fred and Brother James said, yes, we'll be a deacon. And I want to say this. Look at their age and look at their health. And they said, yes, we will. Brother Fred can't hardly walk in here. And Brother James... And James, and James talked about you men. And your wives, you don't miss a service. Faithful. You could walk up here and you could say yes. They put us in. We've tried to be faithful. We've tried to be faithful. Or to put us shame, wouldn't he? Number three. What about separation? Would you be ashamed to say I've separated myself? Second Corinthians chapter number six. Chapter number six. I want you to look 2 Corinthians, if you will, please. Verse number 17. And the Word of God says this. He said, Wherefore come out from among them, and be ye separated, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. And I will be a father unto you, and ye shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God said, come out from among the world and be separated. What is God saying to us? A clean life for Christ's sake. A clean life that other people can see. A clean life that Other people want clear-cut testimony to a sinner. The thing about it is other other people want to see a clean life. They want to see a church that's clean. When they hear you say, hey, come to Mount Carmel Baptist Church, they want want to see a Christian asking them to, to come. They won't, don't want to see somebody that's been cussing and vamping and living like a devil and claiming to be a Christian. 
the thing about it is we they want to be we got to be careful about maintaining some high standards. It's all right when the boat's in the water, but when the water gets in the boat, brother, we got trouble in our life. If you're going to be a Christian, be one. Would you be embarrassed to stand before God and say, hey, I'm a Christian. I've come out from among the world and I'm separated. I don't drink, I don't cuss. Hey, I'm living straight. Not only that, but let's go to number four. And the thing about it is 1 Peter in chapter 4 and verse number 10. Listen to what the Word of God says there. 1 Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. Look what it says. As every man hath received the gift, even so, even so minister the same one to another as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. Honor God with your possessions. Honor God with what you have. Honor God with, listen, you might not have a whole lot, but honor God with what you have. Honor, give God the best you got. A fellow asked me one time, he said, why in the world do you wear a suit and a tie every time do you go to church? Why in the world do you do it? I said, I give God the best I got. Amen. And the thing about it is, that honor him, but, and not only that, but help, help to bear the burden of other people. You don't know what kind of shape somebody else is in. You don't know what kind of trouble they're in. You don't know what, what they're going through. And not only that, but the thing about it is, and we need to be heeded to command God's precepts. But God's, God's got, some, got some things out there that needs done, and God's got some things out there that needs doing, and brother, somebody's got to get them done. There's some people that are hurting. And brother, it's not me or mine. Brother, it's all of us living together. And not only that, but look at this. And I believe I'm going to get through it. We'll just hurry on through it. What about our spirituality? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 13. Real quick. We're going through it. We can do, we can do it. And the thing about it is, our spirituality. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse number 13. Listen to what it says. Which things also we speak, not of words of man's wisdom teacheth us, which, now listen, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. But listen to verse 14. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. The man out here in the world does not understand this book. And the thing about it is, he is shallow in Christian living. He's shallow in understanding this book. Don't go out there and try to cram the Word of God down his throat. You can't do it. And God, if when you stand before God and you need to understand, you can run more people away. You can catch more flies with sugar than you can with vinegar. Love people in the church. Love them in here. Not put them, a drunk don't want to hear he's a drunk. He knows what he is. And the thing about it is, the thing, small, 
spirituality. I mean, don't go and tell them how, how great you are. But go and tell them how great He is. How great He is. And the thing about it is, show them, show them how slack the world is in true love, not in taking their love for granted and destroying their lives. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10. Listen to what it says. Chapter 6 and verse number 10 in Ephesians. Listen. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Put on the whole armor of God. Uh, Now, what is God talking about? He's talking about a weak in Christian courage. This is how to get strong. Christ is warning you. When you stand, would you be embarrassed? God said, do you have on the whole armor of God? Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. God is already telling you what to do. God is trying to tell you how to stand. He is trying to tell you how to be, to to stand true and you've waited on God for uh, for a convenient time and a chance to get a hold of somebody, you put on the whole armor of God and you can do it. You can do it. But I'm going to tell you what a weak Christian will do. Can I tell you? And I know I'm going to hurt some feelings tonight. And I'll tell you this. Look in Ephesians chapter number 5. But you'll get over it. Because I'm going to read it out of the book. Chapter 5, verse 1. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. Walk in love as Christ also hath loved us. See, it's in love. And hath given himself for us the offering and sacrifice to God for a sweet smelling savor. See, God loves you. God loves you. And I do too. Now let's go, let's go down to verse number 6. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because as these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Now, if you get out of the will of God, listen. For you were sometimes in darkness, but now you're in light. In the Lord, walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is goodness and righteousness and truth. Provoking what, or proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Now, now, listen to me. Listen. Give me them ears. And have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. What's he talking about? We'll we'll sit around all day long with somebody that's lost without God, and we're afraid to invite them to church. We're ashamed to tell them about Jesus. We're ashamed, our own kinfolks, And God said, don't you sit around with them. God said, don't have fellowship with them. I'm reading now the Word of God now. I'm reading now the book. He didn't say if it's family. He didn't say if it was your neighbor. He said if it was anybody. And then He said, for it is a shame A shame for you now. It is a shame even to speak of those things which are done to them in secret. 
But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light, for whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Wake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. You're going to stand before God. Would you be ashamed? I sat there all day long with Uncle Bill, Aunt Sally, and Cousin Joe, and uh, Evelyn, and all of that bunch, and I knew every one of them was lost without God, you know, and all oh, we laughed and joked and laughed at their dirty jokes and everything all evening long, and I just didn't want to invite them to church. You're going to say, you're going to be embarrassed when you stand before God. God said, I'm going to treat you like a fool. Because it's going to be brought out into the light and you're going to be ashamed. And it's going to cost you. God said you're going to pay. It's going to cost you. Folks, there are going to be a lot of things. There are a lot of things in this book you don't like. Last thing in closing about the love for the Savior. John chapter 21. This is it. This is it. John chapter 21 and in verse 15. And the Bible says, So when they had dined, Jesus said unto Simon Peter, Simon, son of Jonas, lovest thou me more than these? And he said unto him, Yea, Lord, thou knowest I love thee. And he saith unto him, Feed my lambs. He asked him again, he said, feed my sheep. And he asked him again, he said, feed my sheep. And if you read on down in verse 18, he told him that he was young and one day he was going to be old. And he said, verily I say, verily, verily I say unto thee, when thou wast young, Thou girdest thyself, and thou walkest whether thou wouldest. But when thou shalt be old, thou shalt stretch forth thine hands, and another shalt gird thee, and carry thee whether thou wouldest not. He spoke of his death. They crucified Peter upside down. They turned that cross upside down. His feet was up in the air and his hands were stretched out and his head was down at the ground. Love for the saints and love for the Savior. Folks, would you be embarrassed when you, stood, if you, when you stand before God? Let's stand. Heavenly Father, and Almighty God, as we stand before you tonight, I think I'm going to be embarrassed because I, should, I could do more. I could study more. I could apply myself more. Lord, I believe I could be a better pastor. Lord, I believe I could be a more dedicated preacher. Lord, I believe I could go farther for you than I've been. Lord, I believe I could reach more for the cause of Christ. Lord, I want to do more. But Lord, this old body sometimes she's 
this old ship, she's she's just sailing kind of slow sometimes. But Lord, I don't want to be embarrassed when I stand before him of you. Lord, help me get the wrinkles out of the sails. Lord, help me get this old boat sailing in the waves. Lord, help me, Lord, to fight the storms of life. And God, help us, Lord, to win the lost at any cost. Thank you, Lord, for this number tonight. Lord, what a God-loving church Mount Carmel is. Lord, I believe she'll fight the storms. I believe she'll stand the test. I thank you, Lord, for such a church as this. Thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.